It's the evening of December 9th, 2023, and storms are racing across Tennessee, when suddenly a deadly tornado drops down in the Nashville metro. Only a couple minutes later, an explosion. Oh, But what caused the explosion? And more importantly, oh what did it do to the god. tornado? Oh my god! What the f Well, to recap the tornado itself, everything began about five days prior when the Storm Prediction Center, or the SPC, highlighted a large 15% risk for severe weather in the South United States. The reason for this was because things looked very bad due to a deep and strong trough. A trough is essentially a moving area of low pressure, and it was set to sweep across the United States and become particularly robust in the South. And while this looked pretty bad, only time was going to tell. And time did tell, just in an unexpected way. You see, weather models showed the trough widening while moisture and heat advection dwindled in prime areas. Basically, what initially looked like a scary tornado outbreak was seeming more like a line of moderately strong thunderstorms. Still, uncertainties remained, so a small 5% tornado risk was drawn by the Storm Prediction Center right here in a similar area from Louisiana to Kentucky. Unfortunately, this would be an extreme underestimation. Days passed and people still agreed with the models. And by the morning of the event, December 9th, things already looked concerning. Isolated and tornadic-like storms were developing as early as 11 a.m. around areas of Louisiana and Arkansas. The issue here is storms were supposed to only get bad in the late afternoon and evening. A couple hours later, one of the storms would produce a long track tornado in Sharon, Tennessee. The storm would continue moving producing a catastrophic and long-lived tornado in Clarksville, unfortunately killing multiple people. The storm was still not done as it produced another tornado in Bowling Green, Kentucky, an area that had been hit by a tornado prior two years ago. And unfortunately, this would not be the last tornado of the night. It's 3.30 p.m. and a supercell begins spinning just to the west of Nashville, Tennessee. Locals and weather experts alike become extremely concerned as the storm continues to ramp up and it heads straight for the Nashville metro. At 4 p.m., the storm recycles its mesocyclone, or essentially the rotating portion of the storm, and by 4.30, a funnel cloud is reported over Nashville. As the tornado slams into the ground, multiple buildings are destroyed, and residents report raining debris from the sky. This brings us to 4.45 p.m., where a security camera is rolling north of Nashville in a town called Hendersonville. A large cone tornado is rapidly moving through the city when suddenly bursts of electrical discharge called power flashes can be seen indicating that the tornado is ripping up electrical transformers. This is common, except it's not just the usual one power flash or two from a neighborhood transformer. You see, it's an array of bursts continuously flashing until suddenly an orange light. Plumes of black smoke fill the vortex and it seems the tornado briefly disappears. The question now is what happened here? Locating the position of the camera, some simple math can give us a brief estimation of where the explosion was. And this leads us to an electrical substation located off Interstate 31 on East Campbell Road. Things are still left very unanswered though. So I called up some friends to give their analysis, starting with Ethan from the YouTube channel, June 1st professional engineer and tornado damage researcher. The now infamous Hendersonville tornado explosion was due to an impact at an electrical substation. These substations are critical junctures in our electrical grid as they allow for the conversion of voltages in the lines based on the distribution needs. Transformers are what complete these critical voltage conversions. In the process, they get very hot, meaning that they need a cooling system. The cooling liquid that is used in these cooling systems is mineral oil. While the Hendersonville tornado was moving through the substation, many wires and other steel support structures were being damaged in the process. A significant impact to a mineral oil reservoir on one of these transformers would mean that this flammable liquid be exposed to a bunch of wires that have now been cut down by a tornado. In footage of the tornado, power flashes can be seen preceding the explosion, meaning that there most certainly were live lines downed in the proximity of these transformers and their reservoirs. All it would take would be the meeting of a live electrical line and a spilled mineral oil reservoir to send a fireball up into the tornado. 
thanks to Ethan, we now understand what actually caused the explosion itself, and also how it occurred. The first few flashes were most likely due to the transformers and electrical connections themselves being damaged. The explosion, though, was caused by a massive reservoir of oil, which, if under the right heat, could burst into a powerful explosion. And that's exactly what happened. One question is still left unanswered, though, and that's how in the world the tornado was able to completely disappear after the explosion. Was the explosion powerful enough to destroy the tornado itself? Well, we know more damage happened from this tornado after the substation, as photos taken of the damage can be geolocated to an area towards the northeast. This starts to seem confusing, but luckily, Trey from Confective Chronicles, a professional meteorologist with a master's degree, can give us a deeper look. Hey everybody, Trey here from Convective Chronicles, and I wanted to talk briefly about the impacts of the explosion on the Hendersonville tornado from a scientific perspective. First, we have to start off with the fact that tornadoes are able to form a condensation funnel because of the distinct low pressure within the funnel. That significant low pressure induces cooling, and when you cool the air to the dew point, you get condensation. So in the case of Hendersonville, we start off with a fully condensed tornado, and then the explosion happens. The explosion provided a rapid increase in temperature, and with that rapid increase in temperature came a decrease in relative humidity. Relative humidity is a relative measure of moisture in the atmosphere, hence the name. The actual amount of water vapor in the atmosphere is not changing, but in a relative sense, as the temperature increases, the air becomes drier, resulting in the evaporation of the condensation funnel. Now, why didn't the explosion stop the tornado altogether? Well, we have to remember that tornadoes are modulated by much larger scale, much more well-established processes within the storm. So a momentary increase in temperature in the low levels is not going to be able to overcome those processes. So while the visual characteristics of the vortex may have been momentarily disrupted, the tornado was able to continue essentially unaffected. From all this analysis, we can conclude the tornado formed, crossed an electrical substation in the heart of Hendersonville, split open a mineral oil tank, and caused a large explosion with enough power to temporarily dissipate the condensation funnel of the tornado. While this amazing mystery was solved, this tornado is unfortunately a true reality for so many people in Tennessee who have now lost homes, jobs, family members, and really their lives, not just in Nashville, but across the entire state. Because of this, I'm teaming up with Carly Anna and others to build a fundraiser for Team Rubicon. Team Rubicon is a nonprofit organization led by veterans to aid in disasters. I will personally be donating $500 as well as every penny this video makes to the aid as they will be aiding in Tennessee because of these tornadoes. Please check out Carly's video in the link below to learn how to donate and help. And I'll also include other helpful links regarding recovery efforts for victims of these tornadoes. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you so much for watching.